welcome students today we will study chapter 2 of flamingo is titled last spring it's an extract of last spring stories of stolen childhood written by anish ja she points out that there is a large section of our society which is living under abject poverty she says that the living conditions of those persons is pathetic there are no there are no sewage no drainage no proper water supply is there even the houses are just temporarily made of tin and tarpaulin she says the condition of the children it's worse they are forced to work why because the family unless every member of the family works they cannot survive they, they send their children to work huh? to scrounge the garbage <clears throat> she says that It's a loss of innocence. Next, what should be done? Remedial measures. What remedial measures should be taken? She suggests. In one uh, one of the stories, she says that uh, why don't they form uh, a cooperative society? Hmm? A suggestion that she has made, and then. Remedial measures, she says, laws should be strictly enforced. There are laws that children should not be employed. The children under the age of fourteen years must be must they have the right to education. They should they can't be sent uh, to work in factories and industries. Hazardous? Did they are? Hazardous to work in hazardous environments. The pitties. She says, life of dignity and opportunities must be given to them. Why? There is a so that. They too should dream. They too should dare, and they too should act freely. That is, dare, dream, and act freely. As regards her first story, which is sometimes I find a rupee in the garbage. This is the title of one of the stories. She needs. a boy who is counting in the garbage and she asks him can't you do anything else hmm? this question is why do you do this and the child's reply is that he has nothing else to do Yes. Why doesn't he go to a school? 
study that came the answer that there is no school nearby if there if there were any school he would certainly have attended it so the author gilgli says if i construct a school will he join will he study there and he said certainly and after some days when she meets him again he asks him whether the school is ready now she is embarrassed because she had just said it she had made a promise which she never meant to fulfill and to uh, take refuge she says that um, schools are not made uh, in a day or so it takes time <clears throat> now again when she finds that the slum children are not wearing any shoes at all she asks them and the reply is not different they say that it, it has become a habit with us even if i if our mother gave the uh, gave them their shoes they won't wear them but she says that her analysis shows that it's not habit there's an excuse to patch this perpetual state of poverty and lack of resources they are hand to mouth and to purchase things like a shirt or a shoe is beyond their means next she visits sima puri which is from where uh, this boy sahib alam he had been coming to scrounge the garbage she visits the sima puri slum and finds that that there are no drainage system no sewage system and the uh, homes are in a very pathetic condition what else is there ah yes without an identity they have left their home in bangladesh during the time of indo pak war in 1971 and after a period of 30 years they don't have any identity what do they have they have only a ration card which is a means of survival as it brings them a handful of grains so and uh, during the discussions with those uh, uh, people living in simapuri she finds that scrounging the garbage is for them to them it is gold garbage to them is gold and if they find if the children find anything worthwhile for parents it's a means of survival because they will sell it and uh, and in, in exchange have some money and for children it was a source of wonder
she finds sahib that he is standing in front of tennis court he says that he likes the sports tennis but he cannot dream of playing it he do visits the court tennis court when the gatekeeper allows him uh, to use the swing she finds that he is wearing shoes tennis shoes and that one of the shoes as a whole she says that he cannot buy the shoe and to wear that discarded shoe as if a dream has come true one day she finds that sahib is going towards a milk booth and he is carrying a heavy canister canister steel canister she asks him that what is doing now he he explains that he is now working in a tea sh tea stall shop tea stall and that he is provided with the meals and some money anish jan finds that he has lost carefree look steel canister is heavier than the plastic bag that he was carrying on his shoulder moreover the canister steel canister is owned by the tea stall owner while the plastic bag was his she is pained to draw our attention what he was no longer his own master he was no longer his own master this is a very pathetic story and what to talk of 30 years bangladesh war was in 71 the years have gone by and the condition of the, these persons has not improved the politician for the politicians it's just a vote bank and beyond that they don't think that these persons even exist next we take up the another story where the boy dreams of becoming a motor mechanic let's study it friends another story is that of i want to drive a car Anish Jain brings to light another condition of another ch child, Mukesh. His name is Mukesh, who insists on being his own master. You might uh, recall that the earlier story 
the last words were that he was no more his own master now this story starts with the expression that the boy insists on being his own master he how he wants to be a motor mechanic does he know anything about cars he says when he will learn to drive he will go to a garage nearby and learn to drive but after having a peep into the lives of bengal makers of firozabad a family to which mukesh belongs it appears that his dream is but a garage bhai bengal making family the children are forced to work in hazardous conditions in glass furnaces near the glass furnaces the high temperature and dingy cells with no light or ventilation and they lose their eyesight before they become adult such is the condition she takes another peep and finds that the family of the bengal makers is living in a very deplorable and pathetic conditions what are these there is stinking lanes with choked garbage the walls are crumbling and the doors are wobbling well condition of ladies before that i should say that the bengal makers are impoverished they don't have money they are impoverished weak and they have they don't know anything else but to teach this art to their children and his jan finds that the condition of the ladies is so different she finds the daughter in law of the house mukesh's house where mukesh stays his elder elder brother is married and his wife is the lady of the house but as soon as the old man his father comes in the house she covers herself with a veil whatever may be the it's a tra tradition with them tradition she is emphasizing upon the fact that how tradition too makes them poor she meets her is a uh, mukesh's grandmother also who says that her husband lost his eyesight when he was barely young and laments that it is his gun his destiny and this is very uh, i i i could not digest it 
can a god given lineage ever be broken now those people have surrendered their lives perhaps they have struggled and could not find a way so they have just surrendered to the destiny and <coughs> she also meets a young girl named savita who doesn't know the significance of the bangles though she is making bangles she doesn't know the significance of it that for the married women it's uh, it's one of the things they, uh, they pray for their husband's long life by wearing these things wearing these bangles and the old woman sitting beside samita though she is wearing bangles but she has lost the lustre she has lost the vigor that uh, that's there to, to live she is though she is wearing bangles no jan's findings she says that in every house there is a cry for money they don't have enough they just they are just hand to mouth and not much to spare young men who have who should have dreams and should do something they are they are also lamenting and they are echoing what their elders say or huh? perhaps years of toil what have done killed and all initiative and ability to dream they have uh, lost the power to dream well jung suggests her suggestion is that why don't these people organize themselves into a cooperative but pat comes the answer that the politicians bureaucrats police and uh, shahukars they will round them up in some false charge and put them in jail for if they organize themselves into a cooperative they don't want it she says that after seeing in the conditions of these uh, bengal makers she has come to a conclusion that there are two words what what are these web of poverty at one uh, end it is a web of poverty and the other end it's a vicious circle of shankar and the in this uh interviewing of these two words they have they can't do anything else that means they dare they dare not do anything and if they don't dare they will not grow up during is a part of growing up if they don't dare how can they grow up but she finds a flash of this dare dare 
in the eyes of Mukesh, who repeats that he will become a motor mechanic, go to a garage and learn the art of driving. When asked why doesn't he learn how to fly, a, uh, fly uh, an aeroplane, he says that he is content to dream of cars. Now this is uh, students through these stories Anis Jan evokes a sense of responsibility among us to come to the rescue of these deprived deprived children deprived section of the society and do some work towards their upliftment. So, children, this is in a nutshell the, uh, the story. And after going through it, you will be able to do justice with the questions that come uh, if the questions do come on this topic. Next we will do the difficult words, uh, find out the meanings of the difficult words. Now students, scrounging means searching for something. Now the children, the slum child children were scrounging eh, uh, the garbage. Glibly means without showing much thought. Uh, Anis Jang told him to uh, come to his school when, when she uh, builds it. But she had said it glibly without much thought. Bleak means not encouraging, perpetual, continuous, a thing which goes on is known as perpetual. Desolation, a place that is ruined or destroyed. So, the place uh, earlier, Simapuri, the earlier place was uh, giving a look of desolation. Panting means breathing quickly, heavily. Acquaintance means slight friendship is there. Wilderness, undeveloped area of land, that is desolation, uh, wilderness was there. Devoid means completely lacking. Tattered means old and torn. Discarded means rejected, no longer in use. Intently means attentively, with great interest. Mirage means illusion. Dingy, dark and dirty. Slog, work hard. Uh, the, though they were slogging, they, they were not earning much. Stinking means unpleasant smell. The drains there were choked with garbage and giving stink, uh, smell. They were stinking. Frail means physically weak and thin. Impoverished, very poor, without money. Implies means suggest. Unkempt means not neat, untidy. Drab means dull. Stigma, mark of disgrace. It was a stigma for them to be a member of a Bengal, uh, Bengal making family. It was a stigma for them. Right? So, we should now be able to understand the 
whole chapter by reading it and uh, if you have any problem please do consult me thank you